<laughs> you know, I think you know that, don't you? The um, discussion is going to be about the University of Chicago and uh, the community um, support initiative uh, for COVD-19. Tell us, who wants to start off in telling us about this, this partnering, which I just think is a great idea? <laughs> Um, I can give it a, uh, a start and talk about the program overall and then kick it over to Richard and talk about the meals in particular. Okay, um, good. So mm -hmm. we are um, we're really delighted to be able to provide this kind of support as a neighbor to our larger community at this time. Um, and so what we really are doing is this overall um, community development initiative of supporting um, our small businesses, our local nonprofit organizations, um, our tenants, um, employees, both of us and of these businesses, and then, of course, our residents directly through the food program. Um, so with the small business work, um, we are looking to provide grant assistance to small businesses in the nine neighborhoods around the universities and really um, asking those businesses to give a significant amount of that money directly to their employees because we know so many folks have been laid off at this challenging time. Um, with the nonprofit work, we're looking to support those organizations that we've worked with through our community programs accelerator um, and who are uh, supporting people during this time. Um, and then uh, I'll let Richard talk more particularly about the meals program. Okay. Great. Thank you, Alyssa. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, so the meals program is, is an exciting initiative that is uh, allowing us to distribute to 19 sites in the communities that uh, Alyssa just talked about. Uh, we're working with the Greater Chicago Food Depository, who's identified those sites and has worked with us and Alyssa's colleagues in the Office of Civic Engagement. And we're excited to be able to use all of the, the staff that work feeding uh, student, staff, and faculty on campus be able to uh, offer them a job and be able to have them provide these meals. So it's a, it's a really exciting combination uh, that's come together. That's great. Student, staff, and faculty. Well, in terms of the, the staff that feed them and yeah. uh, mm -hmm. provide them, we've been able to um, make sure that they have um, uh, they get paid and then uh, they in turn are, are helping us with this meals initiative so the typically uh, the staff that work through um, through the various companies that provide food on campus um, are feeding our students faculty and staff and so we're excited to be able to have them uh, take a big part in helping us feed um, the the needy in the communities that directly surround the university how, how did that come about, either of you? Yeah, it's a great question, Cliff. I mean, I think it's it's part of, and Alyssa's talked a little bit about it, but the university has, through the Office of Civic Engagement, has wants to engage with the surrounding community and find a way that we can continue to support uh, those communities. And so, it's it, with that in mind, when we when we knew this this um, this pandemic crisis uh, had come no. upon, mm -hmm. and we knew we wanted to support the employees that uh, work for the companies that provide food on campus and support them. And also, they have a great deal of expertise and a great passion for feeding uh, people. And uh, we knew that there was a need in the surrounding community. So it was really bringing together all of those different people around the university and, and coming up with this way that we could help uh, serve the communities that, that are directly around us. I think it's great because it is certainly needed, without a doubt, to both of you, and I commend you for doing it. Oh, how did it come about that uh, you got involved to the degree that you have? I just think it's a great thing. You know, I really think it was this idea that we have, um, especially over the last 10, 15 years, put an enormous emphasis on how can the university um, more directly support the communities that surround us. And so um, we, when we were looking at this time, we thought, um, what can we do that can further support these programs that uh, we've all worked together on, um, both us as the university and our community partners, frankly, um, and how now that we've kind of together built this infrastructure, can we utilize it to um, support uh, these 
uh, community members who now find themselves in need in a way that they haven't before. Um, so it really was, I think, a natural outgrowth of the work that we've been doing for a while now. Um, and because we've uh, been able to uh, create those partnerships and lay the, that groundwork, it was relatively easy to spring into action in this um, very quick way now that we were facing this crisis. You know, when you, I'm, I'm glad you're saying that, uh, Alyssa, but you said uh, <laughs> this wasn't something you anticipated, was it? <laughs> no, certainly no, not. No, <laughs> um, You know, it, it, it was more that we um, were thinking about, you know, overall, what does a community need? It needs yeah. um, good, strong uh, local agencies. It needs strong local businesses. It needs jobs for people. Um, and so because we had put emphasis on that, um, that infrastructure was able to be uh, uh, actionalized at this time. But that, that isn't something that you would normally do as a university, in my opinion, anyway. D listen, don't get me wrong now. I'm, I'm very, very happy you're doing what you're doing. You know, oh, but, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, and I think in particular something that we've done um, in our work overall is really thinking more about partnership um, and how we can utilize the uh, incredible resources of the university that go beyond money um, in the work that we do. So it is a lot about thinking about how do our resources as an employer, as someone who purchases um, things, as someone who is, of course, a provider of educational resources, um, so we do a ton of capacity building work, mm -hmm. how do we especially leverage that? Um, and so we are still doing all that at this time, but because of this incredible crisis, we realize that we also oh, yeah. at this time need to be a funder as well. I think that's great. And let me make sure people understand, uh, Alisa and Richard, uh, the, the neighborhoods, uh, Douglas, uh, Grand Boulevard, uh, Greater Grand Cross Crossing, Hyde Park, Kenwood, uh, Oakland, South Shore, Washington Park, Woodlawn, that, that's all included, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, it's the nine neighborhoods around the university. Nine neighborhoods, and that's uh, 3,000 breakfasts, lunches, and dinners will be provided seven days a week through. Uh, this is just, uh, how many meals is that? <laughs> so, we, we, Cliff, we think this gonna we're going to be able to do over two hundred and twenty-five thousand meals over the course of uh, this this next two and a half months uh, as we as we do this. So it's um, so that's a, that's a, that's a, that's what we have committed to, and we'll be doing uh, at least that. And if there's a way for us to do uh, more than that, we certainly will with the, with the help of of other partners and and uh, and philanthropy because um, there are other people that have recognized uh, the need and, and want to help. And so we're hoping to be able to leverage the infrastructure we've built to be able to do even more than that. And so that's, uh, that's something, this is a, a certainly a fluid situation, and we continue to add sites and, mm -hmm. and continue to work with different community partners through the Greater Chicago Food Depository to, to expand within those nine neighborhoods uh, the places where people can go get food. That's what I was going to ask you, Richard. Is was, mm -hmm. was there going to be uh, more sites added? Yes. Yes. Doing, yeah. Yes. We're working with mm -hmm. um, uh, the food depository. Um, they're they're very well connected. They have over seven hundred partners uh, citywide, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. they're working. Their knowledge of those partners and the needs in those particular areas has been enormously helpful. They've been a great partner for us, and we want to continue to work with them and also. Um, through Office of Civic Engagement with the Alderman, um, help identify other uh, locations that, that could be added to this. So it's definitely we will continue to add sites as we go on. We certainly just finished the first week of it, so, so there's a lot, a, a lot of opportunity for us to add additional sites. I can tell you uh, without a doubt how wonderful this is. I used to be an Alderman once. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't have anything like this is the time. Yeah. Uh, this, you know, this, this is just a great thing to be able to, 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 to do this. Let me ask this to either of you. Uh, somebody's going to call and say, I, I'm disabled or elderly, whichever. Can meals be delivered to me? 
Who wants you to respond to that? Yeah, so if the individuals, um, it's, we're not able to, to deliver to individuals at this time, but there are mm-hmm. um, locations that work with individuals who have those sorts of needs. And so um, we're working with those organizations uh, in trying to get food to those who need it. Um, and so that's, that's what we're working, how we're doing it currently. If anybody has a question, our call in number is 312-374-8130. This is a great thing that the uh, university is putting together. Uh, with, are, are you all, um, you know, the Greater Chicago Food Depository has the network that you talked about, but are you surprised, either of you, with the unbelievable problem that has uh, come about and as quickly as it has and continues. Melissa, do you want to take that yeah. one or do you want, would, would like to take, like for me to take a shot at it? Uh, sure, why don't you go ahead, Richard. Okay. Yeah, I think it's been surprising. I mean, this is yeah. truly unprecedented mm-hmm. and so uh, I think, you know, it's, it's a new day in so many different ways uh, that it's, um, has come about, and so we continue to try to be uh, nimble and try to adapt as, as uh, something changes each day. And so, so pleased to have the infrastructure we have in place, the the community partnerships and relationships, um, and the, the the people that we have in place that are working in the university who are committed to that. So uh, that allows us to be able to do uh, things like this and, and the, all the other community initiatives that we're doing. Um, because we have that infrastructure in place and, and the relationships. So, but certainly I think we have to continue to be flexible and adaptable because it, uh, uh, you know, I don't, I, it's, it's new ground, and I think each day we're learning new things. I think so, and I just think it's tremendous that you being able to, to uh, help as many people as you are because uh, Richard and uh, Lisa, that there, there are people who obviously are just, um, you know, they don't know what the hell to do. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're helping a whole lot of folks doing what you're doing. I think it's great. I want to mention. No, we appreciate that. Um, I did want to just give a direction sure. to our website too, sure. just as people are looking for information about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, one site that people should look at is coronavirusupdates.uchicago.community support. And that'll give direction to the application for the small businesses, as well as a list of the uh, the meal sites for the meal delivery. Okay. Give us that again, would you? Alyssa? Sure. Yeah. Coronavirus updates. Spell that. One word. Spell that. Dot uchicago. Dot edu mm-hmm. slash community dash support. I need you to spell that. C o r o a. So, excuse me, C-O-R-O-N-A-V-I-R-U-S-U-P-D-A-T-E-S dot U-Chicago, U-C-H-I-C-A-G-O dot E-D-U slash community support. Could there be a phone number? <laughs> <laughs> you know, right now, because of the volume, I don't think there's a um, specific phone number to call. Richard, is there one for food? There, there re- it really isn't. I, I think the no phone number that I would uh, give out is that our partners at the Greater Chicago Food Depository have a phone number. And if, Cliff, I can give you that number. Fine, Richard. But, mm-hmm. Yes, that's 773-247-3673. Great, great. Seven seven three, two four seven three six six three. Yes, That's great. and so they they also have the same information, and um, and uh, that can that can be helpful. Uh, in addition, their website as well. But that's if you were looking for a phone number, that would be a good phone number. That would be a good people one. had questions about the food program in particular. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's great. That's great. I wonder, um, you know, have. Have you all been able to, at this point, it's early, obviously, but have you been doing this long enough to understand uh, how good the program is going? 
Yeah, you're you're right in saying that you know that it is early. It's we've, early. Yeah. We've done done our first. You know, we've made uh, uh, you know deliveries each each day since Monday. So we've made deliveries today. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been getting some really strong feedback from the sites that we've been delivering to. Um, mm-hmm. How appreciative people are, and and that that we continue to. Um, as we work with new sites, work with them in terms of what their needs are, and obviously the needs are many, uh, and trying to make sure that we get them uh, food. Not all of these sites are open every day, um, and so we're, we're adjusting with each day. We, we will be delivering to different sites, and then there are some that are, are open every day, and we deliver to those. And so it's, um, it's, been, it's been very positive. The morale of the staff that are making these meals is tremendous. And they, they are excited about being able to give back to the community. And we have a, a significant number of the staff uh, that, that are making these meals that live in the communities that we're, that we're serving. So they know, they know the need is, is great, and they, know, uh, um, and they, they really feel uh, great about the work that they're doing to, to help with that need. So, uh, how did you um, – I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did you put that together so quickly? Well, it's it's. Um, I think it, it's you know the. the you know what I'm saying? It's, it's this is not a small thing you're doing here. Yeah, it's a it's quite an undertaking. Right. Uh, I'm fortunate that there's a great team at the university uh, across the board that really uh, has, has pitched in from the moment uh, this idea became a reality. And then you know I can't uh, talk highly enough about the individual staff um, that that that. Uh, came in and and really have um, have made it. You know, they're they're away from their families. They're working and they're they're um, mm-hmm. they're putting these meals together and helping deliver them. And so uh, their their uh, commitment to this project, um, along with all the infrastructure that we were able to put into place um, very quickly, um, has been a real been a real part of how it's been successful. Um, and a part of that is that. You know that on a on a regular day we're feeding a lot of students and and so we have yeah. facilities and systems and just uh, uh, the, all the equipment that allows us to do these sorts of things. Mm-hmm. We we used to be able to feed the the um, the, the the over three thousand undergraduates that are living in our in our residence halls on a daily basis. So that that level of of um, Food production and that level of organization is already there, and and so um, that's what's helped us. In addition to to many of my colleagues around campus who have really pitched in to to help us get this up and running so quickly. So it's been a real a real team effort. It's been great to see. That's great. Well, Richard, yeah, and I think to Richard's point yeah, about sorry. that capacity that we have, I think that's especially why we felt like um, this was a job for us. Uh, there are so many needs right now with what's going on in the world. And when we looked at what can the university do, what resources does it have, um, this unique capacity to feed 3,000 people a day was one of them. And so I think that was um, part of the reason why we especially said this is a thing that we can do, this is a thing that we can do quickly um, and, and really uh, contribute to the community at this time, as so many other people are doing as well in the ways that they best can. Yeah, you wouldn't think they could do that that quickly. That's exactly mm-hmm. correct. That, that, that's great. Well, you, you think there will be more sites uh, added to either of you? I do. I do. Mm-hmm. We've we've already within um, within a week we've gone from having uh, say six or seven sites all the way up to nineteen. That's happened just in a week. So uh, I do expect that um, coming on programs like your own and, and, and people hearing about this. Um, and continuing to work with our partners at the at the food depository, will 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 we'll, there'll be more partners um, that we'll be able to add, and more sites we'll be able to add. So I do expect that'll happen. Well, I just think it's great that uh, because that's what is is needed for a whole lot of people, and particularly you're talking about the the student body. That's extremely important, and there are so many people in those neighborhoods that you mentioned. Uh, where there are folks who, who, who are going to need some some help, and you know yeah. that, and 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 you're you're addressing it, you know, like we're talking about someone who is elderly or disabled, or, you know, can get uh, a meal delivered. That 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 is so 
meaningful, Elisa and Richard, you know? It really is. What else do we need to know in our last few minutes? Alyssa, do you want um, to talk no, a little I, bit more? I can talk a little bit more about the, uh, the program for small businesses because that application is due um, oh, on yeah. Monday, and we have received mm -hmm. a lot of applications um, but are certainly welcoming more um, from businesses in those nine community areas, um, and particularly those with a physical presence. Um, we really want to use this money to uh, support not just the individual businesses and their employees, um, but the neighborhoods and commercial corridors as well. And this is really a part of our uh, U Chicago local initiative that we've had um, for about the last eight years now, which is our effort to buy local, live local, and hire local through the university. So continuing that support at this time where um, we might not be purchasing from a new business, but we can support them in this other way. And when, when do, do the new businesses, uh, when do they have to apply for that, uh, Lisa? They'll need to submit an application by this coming Monday evening. Okay, by Monday. And, and uh, how do they do that? They do that through that, uh, that website that I mentioned. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, if they, all right. if they yeah. Google also, uh, they'll be able to find it. If they just Google University of Chicago COVID response, that might be even easier. Um, and uh, it's a fairly simple application. Um, we're really looking for them to show some impact from the COVID response um, as well as uh, how it's impacted their employees and how they've contributed to their community um, overall. Um, and then we'll be uh, really trying to turn around those grants very, very quickly um, within the next few weeks because we're really thinking of this as a bridge to larger government funding, which we know will mm -hmm. be coming, um, but this is designed to really help people uh, in this immediate time before any of those larger funds get released. Okay, and that was the number you gave me before, 773-247-3663. Wonderful. I want to thank you both, Alyssa Berman-Cutler and Richard Mason. You're giving us some great information.